Tonight on Royal Caribbean's Harmony of the Seas, we are dining at Jamie's Italian. If you don't know, we do dining reviews every single Monday, so be sure to check those out. So Jamie's Italian is actually Jamie Oliver's restaurant here on the ship and we are actually dining here with our friends Chris and Sarah. They were with us the other night whenever we dined at Chops as well. So obviously this is an Italian restaurant and this is actually one of the specialty restaurants so it is an additional fee or it can be included in your unlimited dining package or however you decide to do that. We're going to be doing a couple different courses here. We have some starters, they have a meat plank, um, pasta, and then the main course so we're gonna be having a lot of food tonight <laughs> surprise uh this is obviously not the cruise ship uh if you guys couldn't tell there are some weird lines on the screen and it's a whole thing that has to do with frequency of lights that are used on the ships and it was causing a lot of problems for us to do dining reviews so uh yeah so we're doing another one from home and it is jamie's italian and you'll just have to find out if it was good or not we took a lot of photos on our camera and then I actually did take a few video clips on my phone because I was able to get it without those lines going through the screen, but still whenever we would try to talk, it just wasn't quite right. So yeah, I'm excited to reminisce about this dining experience because, well, you'll just have to find out why. I'm not sure I even remember. I'm oh, kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I remember. <laughs> I remember. So like Taylor had already done the introduction, we'll break right into the appetizers. So we actually had ordered a bunch of different appetizers to share. Our, like I said, our friends Chris and Sarah were with us. So we each kind of ordered an appetizer and then our server had suggested that we get the meat plank since there were four of us and it would be an awesome appetizer to share. And he was right. Yeah. The meat plank was amazing. So the meat plank came with a prosciutto, a fennel salami, copa picante and pistachio mortadella with a tomato crostini. Bocconcini mozzarella, Percornio sardo and chili jam, focaccia, olives, and pickles. I'm so glad Taylor just read all of those because I would have not <laughs> been able to do that at all. I really tried. <laughs> no, but the meat plank was so good. All of the meats on there tasted like super fresh and the mozzarella was really good. Yeah. And all of the accompaniments that came with it right. paired perfectly with all the meats and the cheeses that were on there. Like... I'm normally kind of picky about like how I eat meats and cheeses like that when they come out almost like a board? yeah when they come out almost mm -hmm. like a charcuterie. I mean that's basically what this was. It's a charcuterie board. It was, um, but it was fantastic. I it tried was. one of everything except for the mortadella because I don't like mortadella. I think it's a little bit weird having like the pistachio in there, but whatever. And another thing about this too is that this is another restaurant that is an additional charge. So mm -hmm. um, with that being said, you know. This All of this food is included for one price, basically. Yes. So whenever you do pay the one price for these, everything that's included, like if you want to chow down, order everything yep. you want. Seriously. <laughs> then the next thing that we got were the crispy squid, which was fried and served with lemon and garlic mayo. And this was pretty good. Um, it's like your typical calamari that you might get. Mm -hmm. And um, it had a good seasoning on it. I think a lot of times calamari or this crispy squid can be very hit or miss because of the battering that's actually used. If the battering doesn't have any type of seasoning in it and it's just like a bread, um, it can be really plain and not that great. So mm -hmm. um, they did really great with that. Next thing that we got were the garlicky prawns cooked with herby garlic butter, chili, and crunchy ciabatta. Again, pretty good. Uh, I know it's just like a fancy word for saying very large shrimp. They were really good though. They were perfectly cooked. I remember Sarah and I were couldn't believe how well that they were cooked and seasoned for just yes. basically being a prawn. And the best part about it was too, is that you just kind of try to get it down into that butter and really scoop all that up and it just adds a lot more flavor to it. Mm -hmm. We also got the ultimate garlic bread. This was a warm artisan buttermilk bun. It came with a herby garlic butter, veggie parmesan, and rosemary. It was fantastic. That was one of the first things when we looked at the menu, we were like, we have to get the ultimate garlic bread because I, I mean, mean, it's an Italian place. Garlic, garlic bread, bread is always really good, but when it says ultimate, like it's got to be really good. Yes. And it was. And we actually, I remember dipped it in the um, sauce from the garlicky prawns and it made it even better. So basically after we had our appetizers, they brought out our fresh pastas and mm -hmm. key to that is fresh pastas which means that they are making these at the restaurant in-house it's not <laughs> just you know dried and thrown into the pot I, I really want to emphasize that because 
it does make a really big difference. We actually all got our own pastas mm -hmm. and Josh had got something different than I did because we wanted to get a little bit of a variety. So I actually got the bolognese. It was a rich pork, beef, and red wine ragu with aged Parmesan. And it was the tagliatelle noodles. I think that's how you say it. Um, but they were cooked perfectly. They were nice and tender and you could tell it was fresh pasta and a fresh sauce that came on it. Yeah. I actually typically don't like to get a meat sauce when I go out, but our server said that that meat sauce there, the bolognese was amazing. So I tried it and he was totally right. Yeah. It was awesome. So I got the creamy penne carbonara with smoky guanchile, egg, cracked black pepper, and parmesan. Now, for me, anytime that I go get Italian food or I get some type of dish, I really like to get a white kind of Alfredo sauce that's creamy. Um, it's just, that's like my go-to thing. And this was perfect. Nice and creamy. It wasn't super, super heavy. I think sometimes a lot of that stuff can be really heavy, but it wasn't. And again, pasta, very, very fresh. If you don't know what the uh, guanchelli is, it's like a bacon basically. Um, and it adds a little bit more of a rich, smoky uh, savoriness overall to the dish. Then we move into the entrees. For my entree, I got the Chianti braised short rib. It was a white oak pastures short rib cooked low and slow, served with Parmesan mash and horseradish. This short rib was so tender and the sauce that came on it was really nice. And I loved the creamy mashed potatoes that were underneath. They had a really great flavor from the Parmesan and the horseradish that actually kind of came on the side there. But this was an awesome short rib. They actually did not have a steak dish from what I remember. And I kind of wanted a beef dish, but I wanted something a little bit different um, because we we had already had pasta, so I was thrilled that I got to have a pasta dish. So I went with the short rib and it was fantastic. So for my entree, I had the lamb chops scottadito. May have pronounced that incorrectly. Juicy chops grilled under a brick served with. So as you guys may know, I've been on a lamb chop kick or some type of chop kick uh, ever since dining at La Luce and having their pork shop there. Uh, and this definitely did not disappoint. It's extremely tender, still very juicy, was not dry at all. Um, and then just the flavor combinations were, were really good. I've never really had that kind of peppery and salsa verde combination, especially for like something Italian. I guess salsa verde for me just doesn't click as Italian. I think Mexican. Mm -hmm. um, and it was great. Again, total home run here. Uh, and I'm really surprised that we haven't seen a lot more dining reviews from at Jamie's, but that might be because of maybe the lighting that people don't want to post because of the lighting. I don't know, but. Now we are moving on into what I probably thought was the best part of the whole entire meal was the dessert. So I don't actually think this is on the menu the way it was served to us, but we pretty much got a dessert plank. Yeah. They literally gave us every single dessert except for like one, I think, from the whole entire menu. And they basically served it on a plank just like the meats for our appetizer. So my favorite thing and the first thing that I tried that was like right in front of me when he sat down the plank was the epic brownie. It was a freshly baked warm fudge brownie with vanilla ice cream and caramelized popcorn. Oh my gosh. I still talk about that brownie, that it was probably the best brownie I have ever had. It was fantastic. It was literally like ooey gooey and fudgy brownie. And when you think of a brownie and see a picture or video of a brownie, like this is the one you are thinking of. Yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. And I think out of pretty much everything that was on this big kind of dessert tray, um, the brownie and what would be next, which are the sorbets, are really the only thing that I ate because, mm, yeah. again, I think you guys know I'm not a huge dessert sweets fan. I really like to go for the um, cheesecakes every so often, but um, the sorbets that they had were mango, lemon, and raspberry, mm -hmm. and I tried all of those. They were your standard sorbets. They were good. Uh, I mean, nothing to, I think, to go over and above to rave about. I kind of used them as like a palate cleanser mm -hmm. between each of the desserts that I was trying because that brownie was so rich and some of the other desserts were super rich. It was kind of nice to have a little bit of sorbet to like calm it down a little yep. bit before I tried the next super rich item. Another one of the dessert items we had was the raspberry rippled pavlova. If you don't know, a pavlova is more of like an Australian 
type of dessert. Um, it's a light and gooey meringue. It came with zesty cream, macerated berries, and smashed honeycomb. And that's literally what it is. A pavlova is a meringue. And Josh had no idea what that thing was when it came out, but the only reason I did know was because I watched Zumbo's desserts on Netflix. I'm not a big meringue fan, but I did try it just because it was there. And if it wasn't a texture thing for me, it would have been okay because the flavors were quite good. Yeah. The next thing was something else that I really enjoyed, which was the uh, Amalfi Lemon Meringue Cheesecake. This is Velvety Mars Capone and lemon cheesecake topped with Italian meringue served with a lemon curd. I'm not like a huge fan of like everything that's here, but I love cheesecake. The Velvety Mars Capone kind of was balanced out pretty well with that lemon cheesecake. So it had a nice little bit of like a sour lemony bite to it, um, but was also kind of balanced out by the Italian meringue. Um, and then you also had another little bit of bite with that lemon curd, mm -hmm. uh, which was okay. But uh, I did really like this too. I, did, I thought it was pretty good. I actually kind of scraped the lemon meringue yeah, off of some of it. She did. <laughs> because like I said, I don't really like meringue, but the lemon cheesecake part was awesome. It's a good flavor. It's just texture wise sometimes it just yes. doesn't, it just is kind of strange. Yes. Then we also had gelatos. There was chocolate, vanilla, and coffee. Uh, I I think I did try the chocolate and it was pretty good. Um, I didn't really try the vanilla or the coffee. The coffee was awesome. I love coffee to drink, but I do not like it in foods. I remember going on vacation with Josh's family years ago to the beach and we went up to this little ice cream place on the pier and I got the coffee ice cream every single night. So I was really excited because I had not had coffee ice cream or gelato in this case in a long time. And this one was really good. The vanilla was too and so was the chocolate. Yeah. Um, not super rich but had a perfect amount of flavor in each of the different gelatos. And lastly was the tiramisu. It is a classic Italian dessert with chocolate shavings and orange zest. If you don't know, it's basically ladyfingers soaked in espresso and Josh really does not like it. I think it's kind of a texture thing for him because the ladyfingers are so like... No, the ladyfingers are normally soaked in like an alcohol. It's like an espresso and, and alcohol. I, and I don't, that's what I don't really like. I do not oh, like that, that flavor. flavor. It has this, just this weird, really strong flavor about it that it I, does. Just, I just don't like. And it is a little bit of the texture, but it's mostly those yeah. lady fingers. Because the lady fingers are kind of soggy, but I think that's kind of what makes it is that coffee flavor and those soggy lady fingers along with there's normally like a mascarpone in there. Mm -hmm. I thought it was fantastic. And it was a huge serving that they gave us. Actually, yeah. all the desserts they gave us were huge portions, which actually kind of made it nice for the four of us to share at our table. And we got to try everything. But yeah. my favorite out of all the desserts was definitely that epic brownie and I want to say everything <laughs> but definitely the epic brownie I would say to go back again I would definitely do pastas I could just do the pastas and the entree Ooh, yeah. um, I think the pastas hand down were just dang near perfect mm -hmm. um, and then of course the pork or that it wasn't a pork chop but uh, the lamb chop that I had was just great as well and I mean, overall, the restaurant itself is just, it's great. It really, really is. Mm -hmm. um, it is kind of a little bit more darker in there, uh, yeah. especially as the, the the evening goes on. And It's right in the um, Central Park area. Yeah. So it's actually nice and bright outside when you first go into the restaurant, if you go when it opens at like 5 p.m. Um, but as soon as the it starts getting dark outside, it gets a little darker in the restaurant. Now, obviously there's lights in there, but it's yeah. just, it's dim. And again, it is a smaller restaurant. It does have mm -hmm. a little bit more of an intimate feel to it just because mm -hmm. it doesn't, it's not, uh, right? I mean, it's not a huge place. Uh, yeah. they, they don't, they can't see a ton of people in there. But um, again, I would highly recommend that you go and try it out. Pretty much yeah. all of these restaurants that we had to pay extra for were, in our opinion, pretty darn good. My favorite two restaurants on our whole cruise were Jamie's Italian and Wonderland. That was pretty surprising. Now, Wonderland was very unique dining, so I can't really compare the two because Jamie's Italian was more traditional yeah. Italian food that people are used to eating right. in an Italian restaurant. Two of my favorite restaurants. I can't compare the two because they were completely different, but I could definitely go back to Jamie's and just do the meat plank, some pasta, and some dessert. Yeah. <laughs> 
So if you are watching this, you're thinking about trying Jamie's Italian or maybe Wonderland or some of the other restaurants, I would encourage you guys to take advantage of the unlimited dining plan or even check out some of their smaller dining packages that they have mm -hmm. uh, because it is a pretty good value and I think that these restaurants are definitely worth sitting down and taking the time to do so. Now you can always still eat for free in the mm -hmm. main dining room um, and unfortunately we didn't have the greatest experience with it but mm -hmm. on the next cruise we'll try it again and see yeah. how it was or see how it is because yeah. it hasn't happened yet so past <laughs> tense isn't correct. Jamie's was definitely worth it just know that all of these um, extra dining experiences that there are they normally take at least two hours so yes. plan for that and that's not because we took time to take photos and video and that sort of thing they tell you when you go in set aside two hours for yep. this dining experience because they want you to sit there and enjoy the food and not gorge yourself and be stuffed within five mm -hmm. minutes of being there. Yep. So let us know if you have ever dined at Jamie's Italian on a Royal Caribbean cruise or at any of the other locations. <laughs>